Cleophus Prince, the Claremont Killer. Step into the shadowy corridors of San Diego's history, where the enigmatic figure of Cleophus Prince, Jr., unfolds a bone-chilling saga as the notorious Claremont Killer. Born in 1967, his ominous deeds cast an eerie pall over the city. Convicted in 1993 for the brutal slayings of six women, Prince's journey from a Navy court-martial to a reign of terror in 1990 is a tale that sends shivers down the spine. As we unravel the layers of this macabre story through court records and investigative insights, one can't help but wonder, what compelled Prince to such darkness, and how does a community grapple with the haunting legacy of a serial killer? Join us as we delve into these chilling questions, seeking answers in the echoes of the past. Before we delve into that, we welcome you to our channel, where we provide you to the latest information all around the world. So without further ado, let's get started. Crimes In October 1989, Cleophus Prince faced a court-martial and was found guilty of theft. Following a short sentence, he received a recommendation for discharge from the Navy. Shortly after, he moved into the Buena Vista Gardens apartment complex, situated near the location of the initial three murders. Prince resided there until May 2, 1990. Before his arrest, law enforcement described the then unidentified serial killer as a disorganized opportunist due to recurring patterns in the crimes. In each instance, Prince entered the homes of female victims during daylight hours through unlocked doors or windows, catching them off guard while bathing and fatally stabbing them with knives from their own kitchens. Police suspected that Prince might have stalked some victims, like Pamela Clark, possibly trailing them from a fitness club in the Miramar neighborhood, close to his former girlfriend's residence. Aside from the murders, Prince was also convicted of numerous burglaries and attempted break-ins that occurred between April 1990 and February 1991. Murder Victim Tiffany Page Schultz, 20, lost her life on January 12, 1990. She resided in an apartment complex near Buena Vista Gardens. Initially, her boyfriend was wrongly arrested for her murder, but he was released three days later. Janine Marie Weinhold, 21, passed away on February 16, 1990, living in a neighboring apartment complex. Prince's connection to her murder was established through DNA testing. In her memory, Weinhold's parents contributed funds to buy playground equipment at South Claremont Park and Recreation Center. Holly Suzanne Tarr, 18, was visiting her brother in his Buena Vista Gardens apartment when she was killed on April 3, 1990. Her murder raised suspicions of a serial killer targeting women. In December 1990, Prince gave Tar's ring to his girlfriend. Alyssa Naomi Keller, 38, lost her life on May 21, 1990, residing in the East San Diego apartment complex where Prince moved in May 1990. Prince was linked to Keller through a gold nugget ring. Interestingly, Keller's mother and daughter didn't suspect Prince. Pamela Gail Clark, 42, living in the University City District, died on September 13, 1990. Two of Prince's roommates testified that he had possession of Clark's wedding ring. Amber Clark, 18, also lived in University City with her mother, Pamela. When the bodies of the Clarks were found, Alyssa Keller had not yet been identified as another victim of the same killer. The San Diego police considered this case the largest manhunt in the force's history. Apprehension In April 1990, a sketch of the killer circulated based on an eyewitness account. A maintenance worker at Buena Vista Gardens saw the killer fleeing after Holly Tarr's death. Initially, San Diego police focused on a suspected rapist in January 1991 due to similarities in the description, method, and opportunity. Prince was apprehended in February 1991 when he attempted to break into a house in Scripps Ranch. A woman whom he had followed from a Miramar Road Health Club heard a noise at her front door while getting ready to shower. She sought help from a neighbor who confronted Prince. Although he initially claimed to be looking for a female friend, he eventually gave up and fled. Witnesses noted his license plate, leading to his identification and arrest on February 4, 1991, in a health club parking lot. After his arrest, Prince agreed to provide blood, and DNA results linked him to the murder of Jane Weinhold, connecting him to the other murders through a distinct pattern. Pamela Clark's regular visits to the Miramar Road Health Club placed Prince in proximity to Holly Tarr. Prince targeted his victims while knowing they would be showering, making them less aware of their surroundings. He even boasted about the killings to a friend and wore one victim's wedding ring on a chain around his neck. He gave another ring, taken from Holly Tarr, 
to his girlfriend as a Christmas present. The rest. On March 3, 1991, Cleophus Prince faced arrest in Birmingham, Alabama for an unrelated theft charge while visiting family. He was released on bail but was contacted by Birmingham Police East Precinct Officer Stephen Lampley. Lampley informed Prince that there was additional bail paperwork to complete and suggested that if Prince came to the precinct office, marked police units wouldn't need to go to his home. After about six hours of phone conversations, Prince, accompanied by his mother, voluntarily walked into the precinct and was taken into custody. Following his arrest, he was extradited to San Diego, where the trial took place. Trial. In March 1992, a judge decided that Prince should face trial after reviewing the physical evidence. Despite the defense's unsuccessful argument that Prince should be cleared of three murder charges due to a lack of evidence, he was found guilty on July 15, 1993, for all six counts of first-degree murder and 21 additional felony charges. The jury later decided on a death sentence during deliberations, which the judge officially handed down on November 5, 1993. Currently, Prince is serving his sentence on death row at San Quentin State Prison. He attempted to appeal his sentence, claiming that widespread media coverage had led to a presumption of guilt among the jury pool. However, his appeal was denied by the Supreme Court of California in 2007. References In 1993, Cleophas Prince, convicted of multiple murders in San Diego, received a death sentence. His arrest in March 1991 followed a failed burglary attempt shedding light on his troubled background. The investigation, marked by fear in the San Diego area, revealed Prince's connection to six murders. The police initially focused on an accused rapist due to similarities. Prince was caught in Alabama after attempting to break into a house. The trial in March 1992 led to his conviction on all charges, with a jury later deciding on the death penalty in November 1993. Despite Prince's appeal claiming media bias, the Supreme Court of California upheld his sentence in 2007. Currently on death row in San Quentin State Prison, Prince's crimes left a lasting impact on the community, with families and friends honoring the victim's memories. Bibliography Various sources provide insights into the Claremont serial murder case and Cleophus Prince's criminal profile. In Joseph A. Davis's analysis, the collaborative investigative efforts in the case are detailed, offering a comprehensive view of the profiling methods employed. Kathleen Lindbergh's study delves into media portrayals, particularly the San Diego Union and Tribune newspapers, and their representation of two distinct groups of female victims based on vocabulary and chosen material. Additionally, Robert D. Keppel and William J. Burness explore the Pickerism signature, a notable aspect of the case in their works Signature Killers and Serial Violence. The legal perspective is covered in the Supreme Court of California's ruling in People v. Prince affirming his conviction. Catherine Ramsland contributes to the understanding of the case through her work in the True TV Crime Library, providing additional context and insights. Together, these sources contribute to a multifaceted understanding of the Claremont killer case, shedding light on investigative techniques, media portrayals, criminal signatures, and legal proceedings. As we navigate the chilling corridors of Cleophus Prince Jr.'s sinister tale, the enigma of the Claremont killer leaves us with haunting questions. The echoes of Prince's deeds, from a Navy court-martial to a spree of terror in 1990, linger in the shadows of San Diego's history. What drove Prince to plunge into such darkness and how does a community reconcile with the ghostly remnants of a serial killer's legacy? As we conclude this bone-chilling exploration, the enigmatic figure of Cleophus Prince, Jr., continues to cast a lingering shadow over the city's collective memory, prompting us to ponder the depths of human darkness and the resilience of those left in its wake. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, give us a thumbs up, share with your paws, and hit subscribe. Your support is everything to us and keeps the content flowing. Catch you in the next video.